Yeah. Is this just gonna shoot sparks out of everything? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna put my safety glasses back on. Oh, it's just. It's a little weak. It's, it's a little weak. Warm it up. Yeah, oh. that's overloading it. That's too much. Too much juice. Hello, we're back from our road trip and I am finally gonna finish these videos, I hope. I'm trying to get them all out before the end of the year. Today I'm gonna talk about how we did the electrical and wiring and the solar panel in the Sprinter van. And I'm also gonna do a little bit of an unboxing video. So the first step was to mount the solar panel. So we had to make our own mounting system. This will mount to the um, roof racks that we got the round bars and then it'll attach underside of the solar panel and that way we can tip the solar panel at whatever angle we want. I'm mounting the uh, the brackets that are gonna hold the hinges onto the crossbars. And then we had to strap it down. I basically just strapped it down with some tubular nylon webbing and uh, used some double fisherman's knots and a trailer hitch to just strap it to the racks. Then we had to run the wiring and install the junction boxes. I learned something new. I learned how to install an AC outlet in the van. So right here, this is gonna be a little um, AC outlet. So we're gonna have wires coming from the inverter, which is down there, that will then run to this junction box. Uh, and then we'll have little outlets uh, put on top of that. That's where these are gonna go. Um, they're gonna sit in the junction box, kind of like so. This thick foam insulation stuff actually came in really handy because now it's gonna hold my junction box in, junction box in place. So I kind of pressed the uh, junction box in like that to see if to try and like get a form. And now I'm basically just gonna slice it open with um, my handy dandy box cutter. Now. I just need to get this out, which actually, surprisingly, not that hard. Um, yeah, so now I have this kind of toxic foam piece, and then that is where the junction box is gonna go. It fits. Not too shabby. I'm gonna try and push it in a little bit farther, but um, yeah. I am gonna show you guys how to wire um, one of these power outlets. Here are my wires. Um, and there's my junction box. My friend Pete showed me how to do that one. That's what the final product is going to look like. Three wires run out from here, and then they were going to go on the ceiling, but the tape doesn't hold. So they go, and they're connected to here. So I did this wrong first because I forgot to put the junction box on first when you're doing this. I did not. So, ta-da, junction box. You're going to break out. There's just little bits right here that you break out, and then you can just run the wires through. And now I'm gonna do this over again. Green, green, this is the ground. You just unscrew this as far as it will go. So it's a little screw and I'm screwing it out. Unscrew the screw, slide this in. Boom. Okay, white wire, same thing. Actually says on the back here, I'm not sure if yours will say, but this one says white wire and hot wire. This is the white wire, this is the hot wire. Similar thing, there's a screw here that you unscrew and you can just slide this in. It's hard to show, but. Cool. Final one, black wire, this is the hot wire. Boom. Okay. So now it should look like that. There is, this is the ground. Hot wire, white wire. Well, I don't know why this works. I just know it does. You just have to slide this in. One green wire. Should have cut that a little bit shorter. Slide it in like this, and then there should be spots to screw in these screws, which I'm going to do, and you don't need to watch because 
go. And then we drill more holes in the van because why not? Because it's just that's how you do this. You just drill holes in the van. And these holes for were for running wire. So we drilled a hole in the roof and actually it was perfect. We drilled it right through one of the beams. Not sure if that makes a difference on the structural integrity. I hope it doesn't. Oh, and do you want to just take this? Oh, you have a file. I was going to say I could take it to my bench grinder and just go. Mm. I'm going to see if I can make the hole slightly better. And those wires are going to go from the solar panel to the battery box, which is there. There's the ground wire, it goes directly to the van. And those are all the other wires that are coming through this side. There's the ground. And the battery. The battery is over there. And you connect through that hole there. This is the inverter. We ended up getting a 600 watt DC to AC inverter. It's incredibly sexy. It's orange. This is your DC positive and your DC negative lead. This is where you plug everything in and then the switch basically controls it. We got a pure sine wave inverter and it comes with these leads, these battery cables. This is the solar charge controller. So this basically takes the energy that's coming out of the solar panels and makes sure that it is charging the batteries a-okay. It's also very sexy. It comes with all these fancy little plugs. This is cool. This is the IOTA DSL series 12 volt power converter and battery charger. This allows us to take any AC energy and convert it to DC. Uh, it's the opposite of what the inverter does. This uh, allows us to take power from our home, power from an RV park, or anything like that, uh, and just plug in an extension cord to charge up the batteries. Last kind of major thing that we got is the breaker box. And here it is. It's from Midnight Solar Inc. This is where everything comes together. We have all of the breakers in this other box here. They're all wrapped up in plastic. Um, we got these, I'm pretty sure, also from Midnight Solar. It's how we're gonna control all the parts of the van. So we'll have a breaker that goes to the lighting, we'll have a breaker that goes to the appliances, we'll have a breaker that's connected to the solar panel in case we need to start to shut that off for any reason. Ta-da! Boom. If something explodes or shorts, we don't destroy the whole system. And all of those are gonna fit into here. This is the thing I am most excited about because it looks cool. From Midnight Solar, battery meter. This is super sexy because it has red, yellow, and green indicators on how your battery is doing. Green, battery has received full charge recently. Yellow, battery has not received a full charge for one week. And red, battery has not received a full charge for two weeks. So the last thing that we have is from superbrightleds.com. These are $15 each, so they're not cheap. They're totally worth it. These tiny little super recessed lights. So that was one of the problems we kept running into when we were looking for lighting for the van, was like, if we wanted recessed lighting, the smallest that we were gonna get was something like this deep, and we don't have that much space in the van. It's like 120 lumens or something like that, so they're really bright. These are warm lighting, so it's not gonna be super harsh. It's already got a wire attached to it. I think can see in there, that's the warm LED lights. Yeah, and they're just gonna have, we're gonna have a bunch of these up on the ceiling. We have a huge box of wires. We got 12 gauge, 14 gauge, and 10 gauge. That's all I've got for you today. See you next time. And unfortunately, I cannot tell you exactly how the breaker box is all put together. We really had an amazing friend come and this is kind of what he does, this is his thing. And he was like, yeah, I just want to help you guys. We ordered all the parts and he was like, here, let me show you how to do this. And so he basically did it all, installed all the breakers, ran all the wires, put everything together. Uh, we would not have been able to do this without him. So I just want to say thank you. I could only look on in amazement and perpetual gratitude. So here is what the final product looks like battery meter. We're at 100%. We have received a full charge in a few weeks. We're currently plugged in. The battery charger that is currently plugged in right there and is plugged into our house. So we have full power. This is the inverter. This is the charger. That means that it's currently charging. A little blinking light. The solar panel is on and working and getting green. The batteries are charging. That's basically the warning that bad things are happening, but it's not, not lighting up. 
that's everything coming from the AC power. That blue light means that it's on. And then I have to use my handy dandy headlamp so you can see um, the breakers. So we have a breaker for inverter, appliances, and lights. And then we have another one, and these are, it's hard to see, there's not a good angle for this. The engine, AC charger, and the solar out, and the solar in. I apologize for the terrible angle. But basically, those down there are for all the power going in. These up there for all the power going out. We have two batteries. They're each 120 amp hours. They're AGM batteries. That means that they have gel inside the cells instead of distilled water. And they're supposed to last a little bit longer. And so far they've done an amazing job at powering our little system. It was definitely a group effort trying to get the electricity to flow. <laughs> oh, we have 12 volts. Hot. Coming in hot. Wait, the lights are wired up. Do you want to test the lights? Yeah. <gasps> oh my God. Oh, they don't work. <laughs> nope. No lights. Still not working. Oh, hell yeah! The LEDs that we got do not dim on their own. We had another friend who's an electrical engineer, and he basically did some fancy black magic to the capacitors. Took some off, added different ones. Uh, again, this is one of the parts that I can't really help you with. Uh, there are dimmable LEDs that you can purchase. Let there be light. This was definitely a difficult step. Michael and I could not have done this ourselves. We want to thank everyone who participated in this step, like cheering us on, coming over to help us out, helping us order parts, figuring out exactly what we needed. It was a group effort. And if you are thinking about doing this yourself, ask around. I really think like this whole van life and building out a van experience is not done in a vacuum. You can't do this alone. And why would you want to? While we were doing this, we learned so much about all of our friends. And people are excited to help. People are excited to be a part of this. That's it for now. Thank you for watching. I hope this was really helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'll do my best to answer and uh, I'll see you guys next time.